All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here's the list of topics to be covered in this video. In problem one, we are asked to write the equation in logarithmic form, assuming all variables are positive and not equal to one. Before we proceed, observe that the variable v is the exponent in this exponential equation and could conceivably be any real number. u is the output of the exponential and will definitely be positive, but could actually be equal to one. The language assume all variables are positive and not equal to one is sort of blanket language because in an exponential expression, the base itself should be positive and not equal to one. Anyway, remember that the exponential expression b to the x equals y is by definition equivalent to x equals the logarithm base b of y. So if we take that definition and apply it to the exponential expression above, we get that v is the logarithm of u. Now we haven't written a base on our logarithm because when no base is written, if you're a scientist engineer or most undergrads, this simply means the base is 10, it's called the common logarithm. If we were using a base of e, we would write the natural logarithm ln of x. You should know, however, that in higher math circles, simply log x without a base is used for the natural logarithm very, very frequently. Due to the change of base formula for logarithms, if you want to change the base, all you have to do is multiply or divide by a certain constant. So logarithms of different bases are all multiples of one another. So only one base for logarithms is really necessary. By multiplying by a constant, you can change the base to whatever you want. In calculus, base e is by far the easiest to use. So in mathematics, we often just assume that logarithms are always natural logarithms. In practical applications, though, base 10 is often quite convenient. In short, simply know what the conventions are of your source or your course or your audience. Problem 2. Express the following equations in logarithmic form. 3 to the fifth equals 243 is equivalent to what? Well, we convert it to a logarithm and we'd say the logarithm base is 3 because that's the base of our exponential expression. The output of our exponential expression is what we take the logarithm of, so 243, and the exponent itself is the output of the logarithm. So 3 to the fifth equals 243 is equivalent to log base 3 of 243 is equal to 5. 10 to the minus 4 equals 0 0.0001. Well, what's our base? Our base is 10. Our output is 0 0.0001, and then the exponent is negative 4. So the logarithm base 10 of 0 0.0001 is equal to negative 4. In problem 3, we wish to solve this for x. We can either give an exact value or round to four decimal places. We've seen similar problems where one number was an integer power of the other. But here, 32 is not an integer power of 4, but they are both integer powers of the same base, 2. So we replace 4 with 2 squared, and 32 is 2 to the 5th, so we end up with 2 to the 2x is equal to 2 to the 5th. Because exponential functions are 1 to 1, this means the exponents 2x and 5 must be equal. Now we can solve for x quite directly. In problem four, solve for t in terms of logarithms or, round to four decimal places, 1,000 times 1.03 to the 2t is equal to 5,000. First thing to do is to divide both sides by 1,000, so we get 1.03 to the 2t power is equal to 5. Therefore, simply converting to a logarithm, the exponent 2t is the logarithm, the base is 1.03, and the output of the exponential becomes the input of the logarithm was 5. So 2t is equal to the logarithm base 1.03 of 5. We can now divide both sides by 2, and we've solved for t. Another way to do the same problem, from the step 1.03 to the 2t equals 5, if you take a logarithm of any base of both sides, and I'm going to use the natural logarithm, on the left we have the natural log of something to a power, so that power can be brought out as a scalar multiple. So now we have 2t times the natural logarithm of 1.03 is equal to the natural log of 5. Now I can divide both sides by 2, but also by the natural log of 1.03, which is just a constant. And t is equal to 1 half times log 5 over log 1.03. And observe, compared to our first solution, 1 half times the logarithm base 1.03 of 5, this is just the change of base formula applied to that logarithm. 
Many students would take the natural logarithm, by the way, in the very first step. So the first thing they do in this problem would be to take a natural logarithm. So they would say the log of 1,000 times 1.03 to the 2t is equal to the natural log of 5,000. This is totally legitimate, but you have to be very careful with what's happening on the left. The power rule doesn't apply unless you very strictly have the logarithm of something to a power. And what we have inside the logarithm on the left is fundamentally a product before it's a power. So the first thing you'd have to do is split this up as the log of 1000 plus the log of 1.03 to the 2t. You could proceed from here, you'd end up with the same answer. In problem five, solve for x in terms of logarithms or round to four decimal places. We have four to the five x minus three is equal to 40. So converting to a logarithm, we can simply say that the exponent 5x minus 3 is equal to the logarithm where the base is 4 of 40. 40 being the output of the exponential function becomes the input of the logarithm. Now we add 3 to both sides, divide by 5, and we've solved for x in terms of logarithms. An alternative way to do the same problem is to take the natural log of both sides. That exponent, 4 to the 5x minus 3, the 5x minus 3 comes out as a scalar multiple. We can divide both sides by the natural log of 4, then add 3 and divide by 5. And compared to the original solution, the only difference here is whether you have a log base 4 of 40 or, through the change of base formula, the same expression, natural log of 40 divided by natural log of 4. From this point forward, I'm not going to do every problem twice. Unless the problem specifically says to do it one way versus the other, I'm going to do the method using natural logs. As mentioned in a previous problem, natural logs in calculus are much more convenient than logarithms of any other base, so by default, I always tend to use that. Problem six, use the like bases property and exponents to solve for x. One over 10 to the power x minus four is equal to 10 to the power eight x plus eight. So one over 10 is not exactly the same as 10, which is the base on the right, but it is 10 to the minus one. So now we have 10 to the minus one all raised to the x minus four on the left. I can multiply those two exponents together. And now we have 10 to the four minus x equals 10 to the eight x plus eight. Now that we have one thing equal to another where they have the same base and exponential functions are one to one, those two exponents must be equal. Four minus x equals eight x plus eight. We can subtract four and add x to both sides, divide by nine, and we've solved for x, it must be equal to negative four over nine. In problem seven, if e to the seven x equals 22, then what is x? You could proceed by taking the logarithm of both sides, but you can simply convert to a logarithm by definition. Our base is e, so that will become the base of our logarithm. The input of the exponential, 7x, becomes the output of the logarithm, and the output of the exponential, 22, becomes the input of the logarithm. In other words, e to the 7x equals 22 is by definition the same thing as 7x equals the natural log of 22. Divide by 7, and we're done. In 8, solve for x in terms of logarithms or round to four decimal places. We have 10 to the 3x minus 7 is equal to 5 to the 6x minus 6. So we're gonna take a log of both sides, and as mentioned earlier, I'll simply use the natural base. Our exponents are where our variables are hidden. To get exponents out of being exponents and being multiples, we need to take logarithms. So with a log of something to a power, we can bring that power out as a scalar multiple. Both left and right are the log of something to a power, so those powers comes out as scalar multiples. 3x minus 7 times the natural log of 10 equals 6x minus 6 times the natural log of 5. Now the natural log of 10 and the natural log of 5 may look like there's some further work to be done there, but there isn't. Those are exact values. The natural log of 10 is just some number. So we're going to distribute both sides. We're going to gather all terms that have x to one side, all of the constant terms to the other. And remember, log of 10 and log of 5 are just constants. Then we can solve for x. So distributing on the left, we get 3x log 10 minus 7 log 10. And on the right, we get 6x log 5 minus 6 log 5. Moving all of the terms with x to the left and all of the terms without x to the right, 3x log 10 minus 6x log 5 equals 7 log 10 minus 6 log 5. We can factor an x out of the expression on the left and then divide by what remains. To solve for x is equal to 7 log 10 minus 6 log 5, all divided by 3 log 10 minus 6 log 5. So we've solved for x to be 7 log 10 minus 6 log 5 over 3 log 10 minus 6 log 5. 
There is optional simplification to be done from here, unless you're specifically instructed that this is not sufficient, and I would generally leave it as it appears above, but sometimes people like to see some more work. So we can now bring those scalar multiples, 7, 6, 3, and 6 respectively, inside as powers, and then we would have a difference of two logarithms that would become a quotient. So now we have the logarithm of 10 to the 7th over 5 to the 6th divided by the logarithm of 10 cubed over 5 to the 6th. 10 to the 7th is 5 to the 7th times 2 to the 7th, so I can cancel most of the 5s out there. Similarly, down in the denominator, 10 cubed is 5 cubed times 2 cubed, so I can cancel all the 5s from the numerator and some from the denominator. 5 times 2 to the 7th is 640. 2 cubed over 5 cubed is 0 0.064, so you could write it like this. You could then, through the change of base formula, call this the logarithm base 0 0.064 of 640. Problem 9. Solve for x in terms of logarithms or round to four decimal places, and our starting expression is 10 times 1.12 to the x is equal to 2 times 1.08 to the x. So we take logs of both sides because the x is hidden up in the exponent. Remember, however, that what we now have logarithms of are fundamentally products, so we have to use that sum rule first. So on the left, we have log 10 plus log of 1.12 to the x, and on the right, we have log 2 plus log of 1.08 to the x. Now we can bring those exponents x out as scalar multiples. We can gather x to one side and bring everything else to the other and solve for x. So moving all our x terms to the left and all of our constant terms to the right, we have x times the log of 1.12 minus x times the log of 1.08 is equal to log 2 minus log 10. We can factor an x out on the left and divide by what remains. x is equal to log 2 minus log 10 all divided by log 1.12 minus log 1.08. Since we've got this far, we can optionally simplify. It can also be computed pretty easily with a calculator or computer. If a single logarithm is specifically asked for, we can combine these things. So in the numerator, log 2 minus log 10, I can call log 2 over 10. And log 1.12 minus log 1.08, we can call log of 1.12 divided by 1.08. Just some fractional simplification there. We can call this now log of 1 fifth divided by log of 28 over 27. The log of 1 fifth, it would be quite common to call this the log of 5 to the minus 1 so that you can factor out the minus 1 and just call it log 5, divided by log 28 over 27, and that's the change of base formula representing negative log base 28 over 27 of 5. And again, I would only go through this work if you are specifically asked to present the solution as a single logarithm. Problem 10, we're going to solve a bunch of things for x. Log base 8 of x is equal to 9. Converting to an exponential, x is 8 to the 9th. That's it. For b, log base 7 of x is equal to 2. Converting to an exponential, x must be 7 squared. Done. Problem 11. Write the equation in exponential form, assuming all constants are positive, not equal to 1. The logarithm base c of r is equal to z. Converting to an exponential, c to the z is equal to r. Problem 12, solve for p. Log base 7 of p is equal to minus 3. All we have to do is convert to an exponential. 7 to the minus 3 is equal to p, and we're done. 13, solve for x. 9 halves times the log base 3 of x is equal to 4. Before we can convert our logarithm into an exponential, we need to just have a logarithm on one side. So we multiply both sides by 2 ninths, and now we have the log base 3 of x is equal to 8 ninths. Now we can convert this directly to an exponential. x is equal to 3 to the 8 ninths. Problem 14. Solve for x the expression logarithm base x of 1 over 27 is equal to negative 3. Now what's different about this problem, as one can notice, is that the variable is the base. But we can still convert to an exponential. x to the minus 3 is equal to 1 over 27. 1 over 27 happens to be 1 over 3 cubed. In other words, x to the minus 3 is 3 to the minus 3. We can raise both sides to the minus one-third power and just get x is equal to 3. In problem 15, we're asked to solve for x. The log base 3 of x to the 9th is equal to 2. Well, we just convert to an exponential. 3 squared is equal to x to the 9th. In other words, x to the 9th is equal to 9. And now we raise both sides to the 1 over 9, and we have it x equals 9 to the 1 over 9. As a side note, 
If you punch into a calculator 9 to the 1 9th, or in general any a to the b, how do calculators compute it? There are well-written algorithms for computing natural logs and exponentials of base e, so if you happen to be asking for a natural log, or an exponential where the base is e, that can be done quite readily. So if you want to compute a to the b, you can say that x is by definition the same thing as e to the natural log of x, x was equal to a to the b, so we have e to the natural log of a to the b. Based on properties of exponents, this is e to the b times log a. So if you want to compute a to the b, the first thing you actually do is compute the natural log of a, multiply by the constant b, take that expression and use it as the exponent with natural base. So if you ask your calculator to compute 9 to the 1 over 9, what it very likely might be doing is instead computing e to the 1 9th times the natural log of 9. To our eyes, that might look more complicated, but from a perspective of computing things, using natural bases, whether you're doing logarithms or exponentials, is actually much more straightforward. So rather than use a base of 9 or a logarithm with base 1 9th, here we have it, e to the 1 9th times log 9 is probably easier to compute than 9 to the 1 9th. Problem 16, solve for x either in terms of logarithms or by rounding to four decimal places. We have the log of x plus the log of x plus 5 is equal to 9. And the base here in our logarithms is 10. So we have the log of x plus the log of x plus 5. We can condense that as a single logarithm to help bring our x's together. So now we have the common log of x times x plus 5 is equal to 9. We can convert that to an exponential. And now we just have a quadratic x squared plus 5x minus 10 to the 9th, an enormous number but still just a constant, is equal to 0. Since we have a quadratic and we want to solve for x, we can use the quadratic formula. x is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 4 times 10 to the 9th over 2 times 1, which is 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 5, under the radical sign. So we've solved that x is negative 5 plus or minus an enormous number divided by 2. Both of these numbers are solutions to the quadratic. That does not mean they are solutions to the original problem. We need to check if they're actually in the domain of the original expression. This thing under the radical sign is much bigger than 25. I think that is fairly obvious. So the square root of it is larger than 5. In other words, we have negative 5 plus or minus something bigger than 5 over 2. So if we were adding it, we'd have negative 5 plus something larger than 5. That would be positive. So x plus 5 is also positive. If x is equal to negative 5 plus something bigger than 5 over 2, that's positive, and if you add 5 to it, it's still positive. Therefore, both log x and log of x plus 5 would exist. So it, from the quadratic formula, we had two solutions. The one with a plus is in the domain of the original expression and therefore is a solution. But if we had the minus, x itself would be negative. It would be negative 5 minus the square root of something over 2. Then we could not compute the log of x. A negative number would not be in the domain of that logarithm. So the only solution is, in fact, negative 5 plus the square root of 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 5, all divided by 2. Now, how did we end up generating a false solution? This can be kind of problematic. Students may think that somehow the technique is wrong or we're cheating or something like that. So how did we end up with a false solution? We took a step and said that log x plus log x plus 5 is equal to the log of x times x plus 5. That is true, provided that all of those terms exist. Both numbers we found solve this expression. Whether x is negative 5 plus a radical over 2 or negative 5 minus that radical over 2, both of those x's solve this expression, but only the positive one solves the original. In other words, if x was negative 5 minus a radical over 2, we would have a negative x and x plus 5 would be negative, meaning when I multiply a negative value of x and a negative value of x plus 5 together, that would be positive. So I could compute the logarithm of x times x plus 5, because x times x plus 5 would be positive. And therefore, that would be in the domain, and that would be fine. But if x and x plus 5 are both negative, in the original expression, I cannot compute their logarithm. Problem 17, if the natural log of x plus the natural log of x minus 4 is equal to the natural log of 8x, then what is x? 
On the left, I'm going to combine these as a single logarithm, because what I want is the natural log of something equals the natural log of something else with just one logarithm on both sides, because now I can exponentiate both sides or simply rely on the fact that logarithms are one to one and say if the natural log of one number equals the natural log of the other, well then those two numbers must have been equal. So x times x minus four must be equal to eight x. Distribute, move the eight x over, factor out an x. X could be either zero or 12. However, x equals zero is not in the domain of the original expression. You cannot compute the log of zero or the log of eight times zero. But if x is equal to 12, then x, x minus four and eight x are all positive numbers and that's a totally legitimate solution. So x equals 12 is valid in the original solution and is the only valid solution to this expression. Problem 18, find the largest value of x that solves the logarithm base six of x squared minus the logarithm base six of x plus three is equal to nine. Well, we've got two distinct logarithms on the left-hand side and logarithms are much easier to deal with when you only have one of them. So turn that into the logarithm of a quotient. Now I can convert it to an exponential. x squared over x plus three is equal to six to the ninth. Multiplying both sides by x plus three, we now have a quadratic. x squared minus six to the ninth times x minus three times six to the ninth is equal to zero. By applying the quadratic formula, we get x equals, this is kind of a mess, but six to the ninth plus or minus six to the ninth squared, otherwise known as six to the 18th, minus four times one times three times six to the ninth. Now, six to the 18th under the radical is way bigger than six to the ninth. How much bigger is it? It's bigger by a factor of six to the ninth. In other words, if you actually computed six to the 18th minus 12 times six to the ninth, it's more or less equal to just six to the 18th. So the positive radical will be fairly close to six to the ninth plus the square root of six to the eight. 18th, which is again, six to the ninth, all divided by two. In other words, you're gonna be pretty close to just six to the ninth, a really enormous positive number. So you could take that enormous positive number and plug it in for X and X squared and X plus three would both be positive. That will be a solution to the original expression. So the largest solution is the largest solution to the quadratic we found, six to the ninth plus the square root of six to the 18th minus 12 times six to the ninth divided by two. Of the two solutions we found, the first thing we did was say, let's just test if the bigger one is actually a solution and then we won't even have to worry about the smaller one. And it was, so we're done. In problem 19, we're going to exactly solve the inequality. Log base 10 of 14 X is less than minus three. Exponentiation with a base larger than one is an increasing function. As you move from left to right, the graph goes up. Plugging a smaller number in compared to a larger number outputs a smaller number compared to a larger number. In other words, you can apply such functions to inequalities. If a function is always going up from left to right, plugging a smaller number in always produces a smaller output. If you know one number is less than another, then the function applied to the first will be less than the function applied to the second. Similarly, if the function is always going down, then plugging in a smaller number produces a larger output. You can apply a decreasing function to an inequality if you reverse the direction of the inequality. If the function is not always going up or it is not always going down, it becomes very tricky to know how inequalities interact with that function, so be careful. But since exponentiation with base 10 is increasing, if the left side is less than the right, then 10 to the left is less than 10 to the right. And on the left, we have exponentiation with base 10 being composed with logarithm of base 10. Those are inverse functions. We just get 14 X is less than 10 to the minus three, which resolves down to X is less than one over 14,000, but we're not quite done. We need to check to see if we are in the domain of the original expression. 14 X was being plugged into a logarithm. So it has to be positive. In other words, X has to be positive. So to solve the inequality, X has to be less than one over 14,000 but to be in the domain of the expression, x has to be bigger than zero. In other words, x has to be in between zero and one over 14,000. In problem 20, we're gonna solve exactly that the log base six of negative 12 x plus 11 is less than or equal to the log base six of nine. Well, the left side is less than or equal to the right. Six to the blank is a strictly increasing function, so I can apply it to an inequality. So six to the left is less than or equal to six to the right. And on both sides now, we have six to the log base six of something, those are inverse functions. In other words, negative 12 X plus 11 is less than or equal to nine. 
we can solve this for x fairly directly by subtracting 11, dividing by negative 12. x must be bigger than or equal to 1 sixth, but we do have to be in the domain of the original expression. Negative 12x plus 11 being plugged into a logarithm must be positive. In other words, x must be less than 11 over 12. So if you put these together, 1 sixth must be less than or equal to x must be less than 11 over 12. Observe, back here at this stage, we had negative 12x less than or equal to minus 2. We divided by negative 12, and we had to flip the direction of the inequality. This is something we're probably quite used to by now. When you multiply or divide by a negative, it reverses the inequality. But why? Because multiplication by a negative number is a line with negative slope. It is a decreasing function. And when you apply a decreasing function to an inequality, you must flip the direction. In problem 21, we're going to exactly solve an inequality. If logarithms are to be included in the final answer, they must either be common logs, i.e. base 10, or natural logs, i.e. base e. Well, since our expression has e to the e, negative 3x is less than 20, I'll give you one guess between logs of base 10 and base e, which is more likely to show up. So since logs of base larger than 1 are increasing functions, we can apply them to inequalities without worrying about flipping. So I'm going to take a natural log of both sides, because then I'll have a natural log of e to the minus 3x on the left, which is just minus 3x. So minus 3x is less than the natural log of 20. We can divide both sides by negative 3, reversing the inequality. x should be larger than negative log 20 over 3. In the original expression, we should be concerned about checking domain, but it's an exponential. The domain is all real numbers, which means we really don't need to worry about it here. We're done. x larger than negative log 20 over 3. In problem 22, let's solve this exactly. If logs are to be included, they must be common logs or natural logs, base 10 or base e. 1,944 divided by the quantity 1 plus 12 times e to the minus 3x is less than or equal to 972. So we want to multiply by the denominator, but we've got to be kind of careful. If we're multiplying or dividing an inequality, always ask yourself, are we definitely multiplying or dividing by something positive, definitely multiplying or dividing by something negative, or is it ambiguous? Here, the exponential e to the minus 3x, it's an exponential. The range is positive numbers. So multiplying a positive number by 12 will be positive, and adding 1 will still be positive. That denominator is guaranteed to be a positive number, so we can multiply both sides by that denominator and not worry about flipping the inequality. Great, so we end up with 1,944 is less than or equal to 972 times the quantity 1 plus 12 e to the minus 3x. We're going to distribute that 972 so that we can subtract 972 from both sides. 1,944 minus 972 is exactly equal to 972 again. So now we have the inequality 972 is less than or equal to 11,664 times e to the minus 3x. Our goal here was to get x by itself, so I really want the only term that contains an x to be by itself on one side. So we can divide by 11,664. The fraction simplifies to exactly 1 12th. 1 12th is less than or equal to e to the minus 3x. So from our original expression, we now have the equivalent expression. 1 12th is less than or equal to e to the minus 3x. We have e to the minus 3x, and we're attempting to get x by itself. Our tool for bringing variables out of exponents is logarithms. And since we have a base e, I'm going to use the natural logarithm. Natural logarithm is an increasing function, so I can apply it to an inequality without worrying about changing the direction of the inequality. So now we have the natural log of 1 12th is less than or equal to the natural log of e to the minus 3x. On the left, that natural log of 1 over 12, I elect to split up as the log of 1 minus the log of 12. And on the right, we have the composition of exponentiation with base e and a logarithm of base e. Those are inverse functions, so the natural log of e to the minus 3x is simply minus 3x. The natural log of 1 is 0, so we just get negative log 12 less than or equal to negative 3x. By multiplying both sides by minus 1, I can simplify that expression, but I do have to reverse the inequality. Now we can divide by 3. x is less than or equal to 1 third natural log of 12. In the original expression, we want to check the domain, but we only have exponentials in the original expression, so the domain is all real numbers. There's nothing else to check here. Here's our solution. x less than or equal to 1 third times the natural log of 12.